playing in a brand new arena. The GCU Antelopes have truly turned their new digs into a home court advantage. Off to a 5 and one start. The Lopes looking to continue their season of giving. Losses, that is, to visiting opponents as they host the St. Martin Saints tonight in the Grand Canyon Holiday Classic here on Cox 7. Well, hi again, everybody, alongside Dan Nichols, Kevin Ray. Delighted to be with us as we get the season of giving underway here. And the Lopes have done just that, playing some fantastic basketball here in this uh, new state-of-the-art facility. Lopes are off to a great start. They're moving the ball up and down the floor at a fast pace. The perimeter defense has been outstanding. I'm looking for another great game here tonight from the Lopes. Riding a five-game win streak, they play host to the St. Martin Saints. The Saints come in. They know all about the road, having played seven of their games on the road. And they've had to do it after losing the conference player of the year last year, center Blake Poole. Blake Poole's a monster, but Jerry, Jerry Jeremy Green has really picked up the slack. He likes to sneak around the baseline, but he's got a silky soft touch around the free throw line area, and he can get to the rim also. Yeah, very athletic player. He's put up some big numbers this season, shooting 58%. He's going to present a big challenge for this Grand Canyon defense. You know, I'll tell you what. St. Martin's relies on him a lot for their scoring punch. They run a little three-man grind with the two other guys, O'Neal and Pendleton. It's going to be tough on the Lopes tonight inside. The one thing that uh, St. Martin Saints will look to do is play deliberate basketball, take care of the Rock, trying to slow down the likes of Kyle Speed, which teams have had a hard time doing. Well, the best, uh, the best chance for the Saints is to slow them down, control the tempo. They're going to look to get into the half-court set and keep the Lopes out of the running game, no doubt about it. Speed was out the last game, but it didn't stop this team getting another big victory. One of the reasons why, great play of late from Braylon Pickrell and Nick Witherell. Well, Pickrell's a sweet shooting big man, and that's a given. But his ability to defend the paint and get some respect for the Lopes on the glass has been huge. You got Pickrell coming up a career high 10 rebounds, also 12 points, four blocks in that victory over the weekend against Northern New Mexico. Yeah, Pickrell's been awesome, and Witherell also. Witherell's finding his shooting stroke, and he's getting to the rim, getting fouls, and, cre and creating free throw opportunities. Of course, key for those players to step up with the loss of Brad Carroll out for the season due to the knee injury. For more on the opponent tonight, the Saints, let's check in, get the scouting report from the coach, Russ Pennell. Play a team like St. Martin's, you have to beat them. They're not going to beat themselves. And as a coach, you always look at that at teams. You'll, you'll play some teams, and maybe they're talented, and they play a little bit wild, and you know they're going to give you some cracks in the game. Then you play some teams like St. Martin's that are just solid. They're just a solid team, and they make very few mistakes. So you have to uh, really be uh, strong willed yourself. You can't make tons of mistakes. So it's the Lopes and the Saints ready for action. We'll tip it off when we return. Check, check, check. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, two. Yep, yep. Yes, sir. Test, one, two, three, test. Gotcha.
I get Grand Canyon Arena. It's the Grand Canyon University Antelopes taking on the St. Martin Saints. It's the Holiday Classic here. Kevin Ray, Dan Nichols, good crowd as they continue to make their way in to this beautiful new facility. And Dan, we touched on it at the top of the telecast. You know, a lot of times you get into a brand new facility and it's as tough, maybe even tougher on the home team as it is much like being a visiting team. But this is a club that has quickly gotten acclimated to the new surroundings. Well, and one good thing, the Lopes have took their time in here and have spent a lot of time with their practice schedule in the arena. And I really believe that helps to get the comfort level up. Of course, it's always easy to be a little more comfortable when you've got the likes of a Kyle Speed set out the last game, which we mentioned more of a precautionary move, dealing with uh, some back problems facing a club in northern New Mexico that they felt they could give him the night off. And of course, getting him back this evening is going to be uh, incredibly important, get him going back at 100%. Back problems are strange. You know, you could throw your back out brushing your teeth. So, you know, anytime you, your back starts hurting, your legs give out. And as you know, for a point guard, that's not going to work. Of course, this is a uh, St. Martin's team that's coming in. It's been a rough road stretch as you see Brad Carroll, one of the players that they had Look for big things this season. St. Martin, a team that spent a great deal of time on the road. But Carroll's been a, uh, an inspirational source for his club thus far. Right now, let's get ready for the playing of our national anthem. Let's take a look at our starting lineups tonight for the visiting St. Martin Saints, led by their head coach in his sixth season, Coach Keith Cooper. They come in with a record of three and five. You see the veteran coach done a nice job coming off of a 22-win campaign in 2010, 13 and 15 last season. Brady Bomber there at the point guard position. Ryan Vota spoke very highly of Vota. Very good on-ball defender. Roger O'Neill, Jeremy Green, and this is a guy that have a big impact on the outcome of the game at six foot six. The senior forward out of Kent, Washington, and Brock Pendleton, another big forward. Pendleton, six foot six, out of 
Auburn Washington. He is their emotional leader. And now for the Grand Canyon University Antelopes with a record of 5-1. Russ Pennell in his third year. starting lineup for tonight. Nick Witherell played so well of late. The talented guard Kyle Speed, Justin Waslowski, Blake Davis, St. Mary's alum, and number 11, the center, Raylan Pickrell. So, Dan, in your estimation, what are going to be the keys for this Grand Canyon team to continue this streak and push it to six against this, I think, a very well-coached Saints team? No doubt about it. The Saints, Coach Cooper is one of the veteran coaches in the GMAC, and he's going to have them ready. They're going to try to control the tempo. Therefore, Canyon's got to put pressure on them up the floor, get them moving the ball, Quickly, maybe apply some trapping techniques in the backcourt and try to rush them up the floor. Crowd continuing to make its way in here on a Friday evening. Tip off a little earlier than usual, but the, some of the fans getting off work early and making their way over here to the Grand Canyon Arena. Our officiating crew tonight, Bryant Kennedy, Bill Kennedy and Brian DeGuid. The father and son combo are out there tonight. And here we go, underway. Here from Grand Canyon Arena. Canyon just running their circle motion, getting the ball moving around the perimeter. Straight half-court man by the Saints. And talking to their coach, Keith Cooper, said they'll mix it up defensively. Pick a nice strong move inside, but a nice job of holding his position there by the senior forward, Brock Pendleton, and avoiding the foul. That's right, Pendleton just slid over, hands straight up, belly up, and I think he got a piece of that shot. Green wearing number 32, Pendleton. Step back baseline, Jay got him up and in to get the Saints on the board first. Big time move by Pendleton, step back, nice floating jumper. Pendleton averaging just over 12 points per game. Wislowski, little baseline floater, no. Pickrell fighting inside. Davis diving on the loose ball. And those are the kind of plays that Coach Russ Pendle loves to see out of his team. Creating those extra possessions. I like the way Pendleton just stayed with it, slid his feet, and didn't hack. Step back, fade away. Nice job. That's an NBA move right there. Pendleton out of Green River Community College. Went to Auburn High School there in Auburn, Washington. I look for the Lopes to isolate their guards. Their guards aren't averaging many points for the Saints. Nice pull up there off the window by Roger O'Neill, a six foot five junior. O'Neill got loose, backcourt trap that we talked about in the pregame there. Came and when they swung the ball around, he's wide open for the little bank. 
Yeah, you saw the trap come up, and that left O'Neal for the 15-footer. That'll be there throughout the game. This is a Saints team that averages just under 70 points per game, shooting 44% from the field. Not a good three-point shooting team. As Speed likes to look at the three, and why not? Looks even better when it goes in. Bomber didn't get up on speed. You got to close in on speed a little closer or else you'll hit that. And speed has shot the three ball extremely well this season. 53% he's shooting coming into tonight's contest, Dan. Well, he shoots the three well, and I'll tell you why. He picks out a good shot to take. He never rushes. If you don't get on him, he just takes aim and delivers. Yeah, to your point, very selective. Eight of 15 entering tonight's game, so it doesn't hoist a lot of them. But make some counts. Here's Witherell on a drive and kick. Finds Pickrell. And what a luxury to have a big man who can step out and knock down an 18, 19 footer as he does there. As we said earlier, he's a sweet shooter. But the real setup was by Witherell just kicking it out to him for the easy play. Pickrell shooting 56%. From the floor, gives the loads a 5-4 lead. Nice little strong move inside there by O'Neal. O'Neal, Pendleton, and Green are going to run that three game inside all night. And they're going to look to score on the baseline and the elbows. The Saints guards are a little pedestrian and don't shoot a lot. Willard on the pull-up, checked defensively there by Ryan Vota. He is a good on-ball defender, so he's been given the assignment against the hot Witherell. Speed, eyeing another three, this one rims out. Saints claim it, coming back the other way. Saints are pushing it a little quicker than I thought they would. There's Green on the post, you'll see the two other guys working inside on the blocks. They're gonna run a little screen the screener action all night, and then they'll get the ball moving. The next dead ball opportunity, rash of substitutions getting ready to come in. Strong drive there. And you can see the strength on display right there by Jeremy Green. Looked like he was grabbed, no whistle or foul, but he was still able to finish. Big error by Pickerel. You don't want to get on the high side and let him drive it to the rim. Davis spinning back to his left, was able to collect the foul. Easy kick out there to Pickerel and Green, as we said, step by Pickerel for the easy finger roll at the rim. Green is the leading scorer for this Saints team, averaging 18 points a game, shooting 58% from the floor. And equally strong at the free throw line, shooting 78%. 25 points, nine rebounds, and a win over Northwest Nazarene. 23 points and a victory last Tuesday over William Ed. Green can put up those numbers against anybody. He's that kind of player. Honorable mention all. Northwest Athletic Conference last season, and they've needed that kind of contribution, again, with the loss of Blake Poole, who departed via graduation. Poole averaging 19 points and really 12 rebounds a contest. Nice baseline turnaround. No, but Pendleton there, they clean it up and put it back up and in. Pendleton's a muscle man, and he's going to throw his weight around inside and hang on the offensive glass. We had Robbins, number 23, out on the floor. Speed inside. Just trying to draw some contact. No whistle. Green there to clear it for the Saints. The Saints showing their flex, showing their muscle on the boards early. Open three on the way. This one left short off of the hand of O'Neal. Rebound cleared by Johnson. Johnson working baseline inside. Nice strong left hand there by Johnson. You like to see Johnson be aggressive and take it to the cup just like that. Well, the Saints coming right back and a timeout being called here by the Antelopes. Coach Russ Pennell not happy with his team's defense last couple of trips. Saints leading at 12-8. 15-17 to play here in the first half. Back after this timeout.
12-8 our score. 15-04 to play here in this uh, first half from Grand Canyon Arena here in the campus of Grand Canyon University. Kevin Ray, Dan Nichols. And it's interesting, Dan, with this lead from St. Martin, we talked at the top of the telecast about the number of road games they played. At this point, anywhere on the road probably feels like home to the Saints. Well, I'll tell you, I, I'm not a big fan of going on the road that much early. If you lose some games, you can lose your confidence. It's supposed to pay off later, but we'll see how that works out for the St. Martin Saints. Yeah, I was uh, in talking to Coach Keith Cooper before tip-off tonight. I asked him, I said, it, was that scheduled by design? And he said, well, it actually was. But he said it was by design because I was anticipating having uh, a different set of players. And by that, he lost three players about a week prior to the season opener, two of them to knee injuries, and one to a transfer. Alex Williams, a big redshirt freshman, they lost six foot eight. Lost him to a knee injury the first day of practice, and also lost to a knee injury a talented junior guard, six foot two, Eric Taylor. So he said those losses, along with the transfer, really handcuffed us. But he said, I feel very strongly about how mentally tough this group is. And so far, they've done a pretty nice job of weathering the storm at three and five. As Foreman works baseline, cut off there by a nice defense by Roger O'Neill. You saw those shooting numbers a moment ago, 75% shooting here. So you can understand why Russ Pinnell called the timeout. Brock Pendleton's really tough inside, and all the forwards for St. Martins have a nice shooting touch on the elbows. Pendleton, six early points. Johnson off that pressure defense, able to get inside with the left hand, and that was the concern of Keith Cooper. He said, we have got to control tempo and, more importantly, control the basketball because GCU loves to put you into these situations and get into transition. We're gonna double off Brady Bomber all night. He's not much of a threat to shoot, and he looks a little hesitant out there so far. Oh. O'Neal letting that three-point shot fly. As we mentioned, not a good three-point shooting team. And in particular, O'Neal shooting just 15%. Go to the big fella who's on the floor, Matt Dotson. That's a sophomore, six foot 11 out of Eugene, Oregon. Their three-point shooting is atrocious at 26 or 7 percent. You can shoot hook shots out there and hit that. Yeah, so you can understand the defensive mindset tonight of Grand Canyon to drop off the shooters and protect the paint. Yeah, Jeremy Green's going to get in that triangle with Pendleton and O'Neal. They're going to screen each other, move around, and get looks. If they're patient, they're going to get shots. Get a whistle and a foul. Well, I think just a stop and play is the official talking things over there with Justin Foreman. You know, you really have to do a lot of coaching and almost over coaching when your guard play is not, you know, is not performing up to par. Foreman and Jared Stoney having some words down low. Johnson inside. Kind of forced the issue a little bit. Was able to draw the foul as a result. And will get himself a trip to the free throw line with 13.28 to play here in the first half. And the Saints on top, 14-10. This is a set backside lob play. Foreman steps up, screens Johnson, and he goes right to the backboard. It was a really good pass. And smart of Johnson not to dunk it. He decided just to come down with it and then make a play. Oftentimes a guy will come up, get up there above the rim and try to make a play when the balls are thrown perfectly. GCU is going to continue to apply this pressure all over the place. Really wise move. Grand Canyon struggling at the line, just two for six early. That's hurting. Nice pack back there on the miss. Green got inside. Nobody checked him. And an easy tip in there for their leading scorer, Jeremy Green. 16-11, five-point advantage for the Saints. Green's off to a really good start, and that spells danger right now. Witherill thought about the jumper instead. Works baseline. Can't get the tough shot to go. And Green there for the rebound for St. Martins. Nick would have been wise to just dribble that ball through and then kick it back out on the perimeter. 
There he is at the high post in the soft jumper, just short there by Green. Foreman grabs it, hands it off to Garrison. I like Johnson crabbing down inside. Nice hook, just missed it. Witherill, the only starter on the floor right now for the Lopes. And Blake Davis makes his way back to the scorer's table. 16-11, another wide open three. This one no good from Ron Vota. Green's all over the glass. That almost was an and one. Lopes got to rotate better out of that trap and get a hand up and also reposition on reposition for the rebound. He was the concern coming in and shows you why Witherell taking the deep three. Finds his stroke there and cuts it to a four-point lead for the Saints. That's not a shot Witherell would have made earlier in the season, but his confidence is up and it was a nice stroke out there. And he's shooting 40% from downtown as the Lopes force the miss. Johnson on the rebound. Foreman with the left hand dribble finds Garrison. Tough left elbow pull up. And Green pulls down into the board. Good look there, but off the dribble drive motion. Just a little too hard. Hit the back iron. Tough feet inside. Terrific hustle there by Witherell. Dotson spreading pretty much ham-fisted inside. The shot isn't anywhere close, and he's also fumbled the ball a few times. That little double screen on the top. Foreman trying to split the defenders, and in doing so is able to get the whistle off the foul. 11 minutes to play here in the first half. Time out on the floor, 18-14. The visiting St. Martin Saints with the advantage. And their leading scorer, Jeremy Green, averaging 18 points per game. Off to a strong start here tonight. Eight points. Saints on top by four. Eighteen fourteen, the Saints of St. Martin leading the Grand Canyon University Antelopes here from Grand Canyon Arena. After shooting seven of nine to begin the game, Dan, the Saints cooled off a little bit, and a lot of it has been the result of intensified defense from the Lopes. They are now two of eight over the last five minutes. Yeah, the pressure's starting to get to St. Martin's, but the big three is off to a good start, scoring all the points for St. Martin so far. All the starters back on the floor now for Russ Pennell's club. Green jumping into the passing lane, gets the steal, and Green trying to hammer it home on the miss. And now here's it from the crowd here. Speed, tough loader, the beautiful touch. And that gets the 
Fans fired up, pulls him within two. Speed rip back in transition. Nobody picked him up and hit the easy 15-footer. Watch a four-point swing there for the Saints. Oh, yeah, that's terrible. Green floated in for the slam. Didn't try to do anything fancy, but somehow missed it. Will Bond out on the floor now, being checked defensively by Speed. Green, baseline, Jay, rims out, tough break. And wow, Wazlowski fighting through traffic on the baseline to grab the rebound. Bond is the most aggressive guard that they have on the floor. Now Pickrell going to work. Gets inside. Nice turnaround high off the glass. And we're tied at 18. Pickrell showing some physicality. Drop step hard and really got to the rim on that. Nice touch on the backboard. O'Neal thought about the jumper, but Witherell closed back defensively to. Green's going to want to come back after those couple of misses. Kyle Karnofsky out on the floor, number 15 for the Saints. Six foot guard, a sophomore. You can see the Lopes turning up the heat against the St. Martin's guards who aren't that quick. O'Neal to his right, got the shot and collects the foul. Boy, terrific concentration there. Witherell trying to fight over the top of the screen, lost his balance and fell in to the shooter, O'Neal. Exactly right, O'Neal comes curling off the screen. Witherell just bumped him a little bit. More of an accidental play. And this is a team in St. Martin that struggles from the free throw line, shooting 69% from the strike. Wazlowski throws it up top. Pickrell had it turned back by Pendleton that time. And then comes back and hit with the travel. Pickerel got his jump hooks uh, packed down his throat there. He recovered the ball and then went up but traveled. It was good effort by Pickerel to stay with it. This, the intensity of this game really picked up by both sides after the timeout. Two point lead here for the visiting Saints. Coming in with a record of three and five. Good defense by Davis. He's all over Bond. Witherell. Going to jump out and get the steal. Karnofsky claims it for the Saints. Six on the shot clock. Pendleton, tough shot, moving to his right. Well defended by Witherell, but just a better shot. That Brock Pendleton and Jeremy Green doing work early here for the Saints as they push the lead back to four, 22-18. Wozlowski was all over him, and he still hit it. It was great defense. St. Martin's in a 2-3 zone. Witherell for three. Pickrell trying to tap it up once, twice. Terrific effort there for the putback. And there's Pickrell again, staying with the shot. Tipped in the miss off of Witherell. O'Neal with the right hand, pull up 15-footer, got it. O'Neal's living on that elbow. If he gets near it, he's gonna shoot. And hit with the foul there as he bumps Blake Davis on his way to the basket. Timeout on the floor, 7.58 to play here in the first half. A good one between the visiting Saints and the Antelopes of Grand Canyon University. 24-20, Saints on top.
24-20 our score. The St. Martin Saints leading. The Grand Canyon University Antelopes is Pickerel coming off of the strong outing against Northern New Mexico on Saturday. Terrific effort, six points here in the early going against the Saints. You gotta like the way Pickerel's going to the offensive glass. Anytime you can get extra shots, man, that's the that's the best thing for coaches. Steve Moore and a junior out on the floor as Speed's left wing jumper, no good. Speed came off that pick and roll, got a really nice look. Here's Pendleton who's played well for the Saints and hit with a traveling call. Just the fourth turnover against St. Martins. Wesolowski with good pressure on the perimeter, right up on Pendleton, forced the travel. Lopes got to keep applying the pressure on the perimeter where they have a huge advantage. You can see the difference in quickness just by the eye. Green will get his first breather of the game for the Saints. And now St. Martins has switched into the zone defense. Straight 2-3, nothing fancy. Feed and kick it across as that ball sails out of bounds. Robbins anticipating Wozlowski would be a little higher on the wing as he had dropped down to the baseline. So fourth turnover against the Lopes. Big Robbins, nobody picked him up. If he'd have faced the basket, he'd have had a free throw. Got to attack the high post against the 2 3 zone. Bond puts it on the floor, drives in, got too deep, loose ball. And they're able to kick it back out. Did not hit the iron, so 13 on the shot clock. Pendleton again. What good all around player showing his skill set here in this first half. He's got eight. Bond's going to be a little more aggressive. He took it early in that possession, but then he found Pendleton who crabbed down for the easy shot off the glass. Morin, good three-point shooter. And if he hits a few more of those, that'll pull him out of that zone real quickly. Yeah, they're going to put Steve Morin on the baseline, and he's going to let it fly if he gets a look. He, he can... has struggled so far this season, but once he gets into a rhythm, he's got a good-looking stroke. Yeah, and he can shoot it over. He's like six foot seven. O'Neal has the... Lopes coaching staff wanting a travel and Pendleton's moved into double figures. He's got 10, his club on top, 28-23. The thing I notice about Pendleton and Green and O'Neal is they can fall away from the basket. You can be on them and they can drift backwards and hit shots. You don't see that a lot. And a turnover, lazy pass there from Garrison. And back come the Saints. Substitutions for both teams waiting at the scores table. Pendleton again. Pendleton's making a living on the right block, and Coach Pendleton's seen enough. He's going to call a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it right here with 5.41 to play here in this first half. 30 to 23. Well, the Lopes had tied it up at 18 all. Looked like they had were able to turn the tempo a little bit, but suddenly, again, Green and Pendleton going to work as Pendleton has yet to miss tonight. Seven of seven from the field. He's really strong, and he's camping out on the right baseline. There is a nice soft touch. Like I said, he went off one leg and faded. Now he's just going to power it to the rim off the backboard. Yeah, we expected to see the three forwards combine for most of the points, but it looks like they've combined for all of their points. I'm sure that was the point of emphasis from Coach Russ Pennell. As Witherell back on the floor now, along with Pickrell. Morin stays in along with Johnson. Baseline jumper up, misses everything. It's great to attack the high post. That was good passing, and Johnson was wide open out there. He, was, he had a really good look. Witherell going for the steal, leaves his shooter open, can't hit it there. Is Will Bond, the freshman. Warren thought about it, but the defense closing in quickly. If you're going to play zone, you better recognize shooters. And if you're going to let Steve Warren shoot that, you're in trouble. Warren gets another one. But Ryan Votaw, the 6-1 guard out of 
Toledo Washington unable to corral the loose ball rebound. So Lopes get it back. Fresh shot clock at 35. 5.03 on the game clock. The Lopes really need to isolate St. Martin's guards. The guards are pretty pedestrian, not very quick-footed. Get them out on top of the floor. Get your, uh, get your players isolated on them. Hicker wants it. Defended by Pendleton. Johnson, tough fadeaway, and left it short. Those are tough shots to hit right there. Did not get a good look in that possession. Well, the other area where St. Martin is doing a nice job is on the glass. They're not giving GCU very many second shot opportunities here, Dan. That's one of the Saints' strengths. Those three guys all are in the 6-6 range and put together fairly well and can get off the ground. The freshman Bond on the drive. And he's able to get inside, but runs over the defender in the process, and he'll be hit with the foul. Bond's really aggressive, and he's a young guy, and he just plows in the paint and hammers the GCU defender. He's been very aggressive. Every time he touches, he goes in a straight line to the basket. Averaging about 12 minutes a game for Keith Cooper's club. Speed left open, top of the key, three on the way, missing everything. Wislowski, nice hustle to save it. Keep the possession alive. Here's Davis. There's that offensive rebound you were talking about. Boy, oh, good things happen when you get those offensive boards. Yeah, Blake Davis got an, uh, an easy 15-footer off a great hustle by the big W. Looking for Pendleton again, 14 points. Pendleton across the lane, eight of eight, giving 16. I thought he was gonna go to a left-handed hook, went off the wrong foot, and shot a right-handed push straight through. Wislowski, nice look inside, and Pickle there for the finish. Great zone offense by Canyon. Hit the top, the free throw line man, cutting to the rim perfectly for an easy layup. Speed doing a nice job of ball denial there on Brady Bomber, junior guard. Bond with a deep three, and rings it up from just off Camelback. Yeah, Bond came off the screen. He was way out there, but he does not hesitate. Like I was saying earlier, he's taking it up. 33% shooter from beyond the arc. Biggest lead at eight, Pickrell fading off the baseline. Shot no, rebound Bomber. Under three to play here in the first half. Pendleton feeling it, that's his first miss of the night. And it was right there. Speed, Speed. on the push, that's what he can do all night long. Attack that defense, get them on their heels, and use the pull-up. Timeout, 2.25 to play here in the first half. Visiting Saints of St. Martin, leading the Lopes of GCU, 35-29. Thirty-five twenty-nine, two twenty-five to play here. First tap. Jeremy Green back in, and Dan, what was impressive is that while Green sat out, the Saints were able to build their biggest lead of the game. But as he comes back in, Saints hit with a traveling call, full court pressure all over him. Saints got the ball in the corner, and Pendleton shuffled his feet. Big turnover there, coming right out of the timeout. Time out on the floor. We're going to keep it right here with 2.24 to play in this first half, 35 to 29. Well, let's talk about the play of Pendleton. Again, 16 points. And what's been 
extremely impressive is he's doing it from just about every spot on the floor with the exception of the three-point shot. You know, I saw Pendleton play a few years ago, but I don't remember uh, too much of this. He has looked really good. He can shoot going right or left. He's got good post moves and a nice touch along the baseline. Well, the Lopes family four-pack is now on sale. Purchase four tickets to any GCU basketball game, and you'll receive four hot dogs, four sodas, and four popcorns, all for just $35. It is the best deal going. Lopes family four-packs are available at the GCU Arena box office, online at gcuarena.com, or by calling the box office at 602-639-8999. Well, trailing by six here. What's the message from Russ Pennell coming out of this timeout, Dan? The message from Russ Pennell is to keep the pressure up every time they get on them in the backcourt. St. Martin Saints are struggling. Couple of turnovers there, some quick transition points, and this is going to go the other way. Six turnovers for the Saints, five for the Antelopes. Boy, nice strong move there from Garrison. Got right into the teeth of that defense. Took it strong to the rack. Got the finish and the foul. Saints, Saints don't play the ball screen very well. And Garrison takes it and wheels it in. Little spin, little kiss, and one. Boy, nice to see from Garrison who got the start in the minutes when speed was out in that game against Northern New Mexico and responded very well at nine points, four rebounds, and a couple of assists. Garrison's a pretty steady ball handler for a young guy with that kind of size, so he can play some point and be effective. Six foot three freshman played his high school ball at Mountain Point as we get a loose ball foul called away from the action as Davis checking Jeremy Green inside. Davis was fighting around the front and got called for the hold. That's just a tough call. He's just working for position. As a coach, you don't mind those kind of fouls because you have to play the post tough. There's that guy again. Double threes has 18. Pendleton. He speared the ball in between two Lopes defenders, Big W and Davis, which is almost impossible. Sure stay with us coming up at the half. Chris Harris profiles the GCU run for children's cancer that happened in October, and Dan and I will have all the first half highlights and statistics. That's all coming your way at the half. GCU looking to go high low. Wes Alaska was probably open for the shot. Probably should have just took it up. 37 31. You know, when you catch in there on that high low, first thing you got to do is look at the basket because a lot of times you're standing there all alone. The Lopes have never led in this game. Had a couple of ties at 4-4 and then 18 all. Nice defense there by Garrison. Gets inside on the drive with the left hand. Can't get the finish, but they're on the foul. Brady Bomber, so Garrison will be at the line to shoot a pair. Garrison was just smothering Bomber on that play. That's not a good matchup for the Saints. Garrison much quicker and longer, giving Bomber fits, taking the ball all the way to the basket, coast to coast. Good looking free throw shooter, and he should be shooting 92% from the stripe. Garrison averaging about 17 minutes per contest. 92% is absolutely unbelievable. Oh, and what a great asset to be able to have a guy like Garrison that it's obvious Russ Pennell becoming more and more comfortable in putting him on the floor and getting speed some much needed time on the bench, particularly with the style they like to play. And him being a freshman makes it even more impressive. Here come the Lopes with that full court pressure doubling down there. This is going to create fits for the Saints. And look who they go to to break it, Green, which is probably not a bad idea. He's probably the best matchup to bring the ball up the floor successfully. I often like to go to a bigger player in these situations. Baseline finger roll, partially blocked. Triggers a break opportunity. Here comes Garrison. A little bit out of control, but the defender did not get back and get set. And that's going to be Bomber again who picks up the foul. That was an easy call for Big Bill Kennedy. Bomber was sliding his feet on the right side of the block and got, you know, got called for the foul. It wasn't even close. Coach Cooper doesn't like it, but 
It wasn't close. Well, and you can see, if you're a young free throw shooter at home, just watch Garrison's release. Even though he doesn't hit it cleanly every time, he's got the touch. He's got the nice roll. Right out of a textbook. A lot of guys don't dribble the ball and do crazy things at the line. Dribble it two or three times, point your foot to the basket, shoot it. Again, pressure defense causing some problems for the Saints. They're able to get it across, though. Under a minute to play here in his first half. 37-35. Lopes have trailed by as many as eight. Lopes are starting to exert their will, really pressuring the perimeter. Saints can't even move. Nice backdoor cut. Bomber got the defender Garrison. Trying to peek outside a little bit. Paid the price for it. Heady played by Bomber, and he also hit the shot. Tough shot moving to the basket. 15-footer. Look at the uh, Saints come up now in a sort of a 1-2-2 two, two look. Just trying for a little confusion. Shot clock off down to the final nine seconds here. With Lowski. Back to Garrison. Had to do something quickly. Witherell. On the kick across the paint. Too late. Clock ran down. Couldn't get a shot off. And so at the break, the visiting St. Martin Saints leading by four, 39-35 here from the Grand Canyon Arena on the campus of Grand Canyon University. Stay with us. Halftime coming right up here on Cox 7. The Run to Fight Children's Cancer uh, is an event that we host uh, two times a year and essentially it raises money for the children's cancer. Thirty-nine, thirty-five. here at the half. The St. Martin Saints leading the Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Kevin Ray, Dan Nichols, our entire Cox 7 team on hand. And glad you could be a part of our Friday night action as well. Well, in October, Grand Canyon University hosted the inaugural Run to Fight Children's Cancer. Over 1,000 people participated in the event, which raised $30,000 for the Children's Cancer Network. The race, by the way, such a runaway success that GCU is now gearing up for a spring edition that's coming up on March 10th. Chris Harris has more on the story. The Run to Fight Children's Cancer uh, is an event that we host uh, two times a year, and essentially it raises money for the Children's Cancer Network. It's a 10K, 5K, and Survivor's Walk that's held on our campus. A great opportunity just to come, whether you're walking or running, whether you're going to do the 5K, or the 10K or the Survivor Walk. Um, all are welcome in the Survivor Walk to walk with the families and the kids and show their support. We also had great things going on in the quad out here with the Arts and Craft Festival and clowns and the mascots and 
Um, so it was just a very, very fun family day uh, for anyone. The Children's Cancer Network is a nonprofit, 100% volunteer organization that was started in 2004 by Jenny Luttrell, whose mother, Patty, is a College of Nursing faculty member at Grand Canyon University. Children's Cancer Network is a uh, group that reaches out to Arizona families dealing with childhood cancer. We provide financial, psychosocial, and educational support to these families throughout their entire treatment. Um, treatment can last anywhere from six months to three years and well beyond when you consider the survivorship phases and possible complications. So we reach out to families at every phase, um, beginning with their first initial diagnosis. We, uh, the social workers at uh, Phoenix Children's Hospital, Cardin Children's Medical Center, and uh, uh, St. Joseph's Hospital Medical Center, they will give them an admission bag. Those bags include basic needs such as toiletries and food, but oftentimes they also contain gas cards and maybe a teddy bear to try and help brighten a child's spirits. Once you hear those words, you know, your child has cancer, it's, it's devastating. And um, it really shouldn't happen to anyone, let alone a child. I think the emotional part, the emotional support is so important. And um, recognizing that there's um, others going, walking the same road or others who can support you is, is so very important to each family. And it makes each day easier. Patty speaks of first-hand experience. Her son, Jeff, was diagnosed with leukemia when he was just five years old, and now is a six-time cancer survivor. Cancer is the country's number one cause of death of children 15 years of age and younger, killing over 12,000 kids a year. In Arizona, 300 children a year are diagnosed with this dreadful disease. The newly diagnosed patients uh, number about 300 a year, but then that doesn't really reflect the number that are currently in treatment, which is usually two to three times that. And then the survivorship phase can go well into the young adult years. And that's actually one of the new things we're working on right now to um, help advocate for that population who are childhood cancer survivors, but um, in their young adult years. and the kind of um, health care that they need and advocating for that here in Arizona. 89 cents of every dollar donated goes towards network programs, which includes a scholarship fund, amongst others. They have families that they adopt over the holidays, so there are kids that don't have um, any toys. <laughs> so imagine being sick with cancer and then not having any Christmas. They also put on an annual fashion show, which serves as a fundraiser as well as an event to boost self-esteem where the children become models. And thanks to the funds raised during the first run to fight cancer, the network is on pace to bring in over $100,000 this year.